If you follow this channel for any amount of time, you may know that I enjoy art books, especially art of books, and I use them for inspiration mainly and I specifically look for things that trigger my creative spark and get my juices flowing. A perfect example of this is for my birthday this year, my lovely wife went sneaking into my Amazon wishlist and got me a couple of books I had been wanting for a while. One of them especially was a sci-fi vehicle art book called Traverse, Vehicles from the Outer Rim of Imagination by Design Studio Press. I hadn't even finished a slice of cake when one of these concepts immediately caught my eye. It's a cute little patrol cube spaceship design created by a concept artist named John Fry. In this concept, these patrol cubes tend to sneak up on bigger ships that may or may not be following the established space laws of traffic and anchor them down with their grapnels and titanium ropes. As a product design student, I have been wanting to design my own models and 3D print them and build on my own. Up until this moment, I had never even attempted this, fear of taking the next step forward, I suppose. So I took my own advice and decided to go for it. What you're seeing is the result of me taking that leap. Turns out Fusion 360 is more intuitive and user-friendly than I thought it'd be, and this being my first attempt at 3D modeling, I am excited to explore it further. Once more, I enlisted the services of Willis, my trusty Anycubic Photon Mono 4K that I got on Black Friday. Willis is a professional and it's been incredible. I was able to dial in the right settings early on and I rarely have a failed print, except when it's my fault. Lowering the ratio of failed versus successful prints makes a big difference in the level of enjoyment one gets out of 3D printing. After about a week of printing and tweaking, I got the final set of parts that will bring John Fry's concept design to life. Now the real fun begins. I shy away from LED sometimes because I worry that the final build might look like a toy and I'm not usually going for a toy look, but this project called for something special. Evandesigns.com is my favorite source for LEDs and LED related assemblies. Turns out they have a little aircraft lighting kit which comes with everything you need, including a tiny computer that controls the lights, a set of LEDs and a corresponding wiring. All the LED housings need to be drilled out and prepared ahead of time. Always wear a respirator when sanding or drilling resin. This fine dust is quite hazardous to your lungs. I had the foresight to design the main conduits for the LED wiring which I knew I'd be incorporating. This project contains 10 LEDs in total plus the Arduino microchip, battery and switch. Fit will be snug to put it mildly. Cured resin is inevitably brittle, even the ABS like I'm using here, so using power tools can get tricky because parts tend to break if you're not careful. 
Super glue, however, is my new best friend, because even though I broke a few parts, admittedly some more than once, resin responds quite well to super glue, and even the parts that I broke twice did not break at the glued joint the second time. Which says it all about the power of thin, fast curing super glue. Once all the parts have been prepared, I clean them up by using my ultrasonic cleaner, which removes sand dust and debris from every nook and cranny. This is important if you want to have a good quality paint job. Before assembling the main body, I need to paint the cockpit and the pilot. By the way, the pilot I used for this project was not designed by me. I bought it from a talented friend on Instagram named Joham van Leeuwenen. I'll link to his work in the description if you're interested. Hand painting is so much fun and I'm terrible at it, but I do have fun with it and it always ends up being organized chaos. I lay down one layer of paint after another until I'm happy with it and that is in a nutshell my method of hand painting anything. I am using 5 minute epoxy to stick the main body parts together and no worries, I got the right ratios. Once cured, epoxy is tougher than nails and this part will disintegrate before it comes apart at the joint. And after carefully masking off Mr. Pilot, who is looking forward to his first flight, we're ready for the next step. I decided to deviate from the main concept art color schemes and proceeded to come up with my own. With the help of a color wheel and Mr. Colored Lacquer Paint, I mixed these tones of light blue and orange as my main two colors. But for the undercoat, G-Paint Black and Red make a beautiful brown that not only dries completely flat, it's also a dream to spray. Plus, Justin is my friend and not only is he an outstanding human being, he also makes some of the world's best hobby paints. You should check it out. For this project, I will be trying a new technique that I learned with my buddy Enrique from The Race for Terra, in which a dark undercoat is laid on and then liquid masking is applied with a sponge to create a hyper-realistic chipping effect. In retrospect, I probably overdid it as one does, so the technique is more effective if you do it sparingly. Oh, but the results will be beautiful nonetheless. After applying the liquid masking, you lay down your base colors and wait for the paint to cure. Using my Silhouette Cameo and Tamiya's masking sheet, I created stencils for the intake guards. These are airbrushed on before removing the acrylic masking. Some of the chipping occurs when you remove the stencil. After base coating, I still need to hand paint the engine shafts, which won't be seen, but we know they're there. I proceed to remove the acrylic masking at this stage, which turned out to be more complicated than I expected. I may have let it dry too long, I am not sure. Uh, but I did what I could with an old toothbrush, rubbing it off with my hands and even with a toothpick. And before I let it go too far and not wanting to damage my paint job, I moved on having removed most of it. It all adds to the weathering effect in the end. I added a couple of decals that will add a bit more detail to the otherwise flat surfaces. Thank you, generic Gumpla decals in one 144th scale, you've saved the day once again. Mm -hmm. 
I'm a big fan of weathering with oils, and Ammo by MIG makes what has become my favorite weathering tool, oil brushers. You apply them in dots and lines with the included applicator and let it dry for a little bit, and then blend it in with a flat brush, or in this case, I used a makeup brush, which worked great. If you happen to apply too much, you can simply remove it using Ammo's enamel thinner. Again, used sparingly and in combination with different colors, you can give your model a true weather look without too much effort, especially when combined with other techniques. Now that the model is painted and weathered, the last step is to install the lighting. Perhaps for future projects, I will install lighting and then weather because there is some handling involved that may or may not cause you to rub off some of your beautiful weather and work. All the drilling and fitting we did at an earlier stage pays off now. LEDs fit perfectly and all I gotta do is put the wiring through the holes, solder everything together and do the final touches. Doing your homework, planning ahead, will result in a smoother process. How about we make a base? You can download the STL files if you want to print this on your own. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.